So now what I've shown you so far is how easy it was to get the first server up. I showed you how we bring in additional servers, Alpha 3 and Alpha 4, and how to talk to each other and get prepared and move all the key information and templates around, and in fact the templates for accounting and finance. I'm not going to go into how we created the templates. Um, that may be for time for another demo. What we're going to show you today is actually how you, given that the templates are there, how you actually generate desktops from it. And you'll notice that you don't have to specify what you put on what server. It's just simply a matter of specifying you know, um, how many you want. So I'm going to click on the accounting template, and you can see from this template as many things that you can do on this template. Um, you can, for example, specify the size of the desktops created from the template, what local devices you can attach to the template, and also policies on how when they're refreshed from the template. So meaning if you patch the template, should you patch and refresh the desktop instances? All these things are controllable. I'm going to leave those things all at default for now. And I'm going to say, look, I want to create nine desktops and pre-start six of them. And so then what happens is, well, we'll go to the second one as well. We'll do that, the same thing here. We'll say, let's start nine of them and pre-start six of them. And what you'll see when you do that is that our solution starts to automatically create a bunch of desktops. Okay? And as you can see from this particular screen right here, there's nothing about how many are in the grid, how many servers there are, or anything like that. It's all about one logical server. Think of it as one logical server, four desktops are starting somewhere uh, for the accounting template, two are starting somewhere for the finance template. And if you look at that capacity bar, that capacity bar is telling you a couple of things. The yellow bar part, part tells you, look, these are just showing you how much of the capacity is being taken up by the starting and idle desktops. They aren't yet idle, they're all starting. And how much is being taken up, the green one tells you the total capacity being taken up is the maximum number of desktops were created. In that case, it's nine accounting desktops and nine finance desktops. In this case, of course, you know, for, this, for the sake of this demo, I'm using a very simple new workstation so it doesn't have a lot of capacity, but you can kind of get a sense of how this all works. You can see how this is all about um, the, the, the grid and not about the specific servers in the grid. So now I'm on the admin tab. I've already started up the desktop, and what I'm going to do now is associate uh, users uh, to the desktop. Um, and actually what I'll do is associate groups. So I've already pre-created two groups in Active Directory, one called Accounting and one called Finance. And you can imagine that all the accounting folks are lumped under the accounting group. All the finance folks are lumped under the finance group. So I'm going to bring those groups in and say that these are things that, are, that can, these groups can have access to Kaviza uh, desktops, and then I'm going to associate them with the template. So let's do that now. So you've got administer groups. I'm going to click on this. And there it is. So I'm going to add the accounting group and you are the finance group, I guess, in this case. And then you'll see that it goes out and quickly gets the description from Active Directory and validates that such a group actually exists. So it's tied in with Active Directory. And we did that during setup. So we're done with the two groups. And now I'm going to assign groups or users to the desktop template. So this is the screen that allows us to do that. I'm going to go to the group screen. And I'm going to assign the accounting uh, template to the accounting group and the finance template to the finance group. And that's essentially all that you need to do to be done with it. So I'm going to stop here for a second. So this is what it takes. And now what I'm going to do is go into the grid and just look at and see what's going on inside each server. I mean, who's doing what in there and have we created all the desktops as yet or not? And so you see from the grid view now, you're actually seeing again that there's Alpha 1, Alpha 3, and Alpha 4 in the grid. And you can see that the Alpha 1 desktops are just starting up. And um, the Alpha 3s and Alpha 4s are already ready. To go. And the reason for that Alpha 1 is more is because Alpha 1 is a bigger server, but you can kind of see what's going on. So that's it. So now what I'm going to do is the desktops are ready, the associations have been made, and just to show you what the user experience is like, I'm going to log in as one of those users, an accounting or a, or a finance group user, and you kind of get a flavor for how this is done. And as to what we're showing you here is that we have a web based um, um, login screen. And you basically log in there, and we'll fire up a, a particular, um, um, uh, what can I say, uh, a, a session. In this case, it's going to be an RDP session. He's going to put in his password. And just like a regular uh, situation, you know, hit OK, logs into the password, uh, desktop, and the desktop gets generated and it loads its personal settings, and you're ready to go. So 
this is sort of the, the overall, uh, if you would say, the user experience. And what I'm going to do now is actually flip back to the console so you can kind of see what, what you see in the console. And um, if you look at that in the user section, just press login in, and now Fred has already logged in. So this is this is basically the way it goes. So what I want to show you now is I've showed you the users have logged in, and actually I've logged in a bunch more users, and I'll show you that in a minute. But basically, again, I've got those same three servers. Um, they're activated. They're working. As you can see, there's two active users on each server. So it says the desktop's active. Alpha 1's got two. Alpha 3's got two. Alpha 4's got two, right? And there's a couple of additional new desktops sitting around waiting for additional new users as they come on. Now, they don't know this, but what we're going to do is we're going to go into the Alpha 3 and look inside it and see how many who are actually logged in. And then what I'm going to do is flip over to the VMware console and actually power down Alpha 3. Um, not inside Kavita, but outside, so that, that way you can see that the Kavita managers have no idea of knowing that this is actually happening. And then I'll show you actually how it figures it out or what actually happened. So then looking inside Alpha 3, there's Allison Farley in there. These are accounting templates. We're getting a, a, a server-specific, Alpha 3-specific view. Now, while I'm still running, I'm on VIC right now. I switch to this console, and I'm going to shut down Alpha 3. Now, the Kaviva managers in the grid have no idea I'm doing this. Okay, so it shuts down, hopefully. It looks like it has powered down. Okay, so now we powered it down. So here we are now. As you can see, it takes a little time for the system to realize that the Alpha 3 has gone down. Um, because they're sort of ping and giving it an extra chance to make sure it is really down, and now it finds that it's missing. Once it finds that it's missing, as you can see, the other servers have taken up the slack. So Alpha 1 is starting two new desktops, and Alpha 4 is starting one uh, extra desktop. Um, they're already pegged at about 100%, but you know they have to pick up the slack because Alpha 3 is now missing. And so this is how you see how it's automatically just going ahead and taking into account um, and managing the entire grid by itself um, and taking into account failures and so forth and, and adjusting uh, based on what's going on in the system. And this is what we're saying, that we're putting this level of automation to make it very, very simple. So to summarize, you know, what I showed you at the very beginning was just you basically bring in a virtual appliance, use something like the VMware infrastructure client, import it, power it up, answer three, four questions, and it's ready to go. To bring in additional servers into the grid, do the same thing, but this time you answer only two questions, and information about its hypervisor, and then you point to any server in the grid. And then it comes in and automatically becomes a part of that grid. And we showed you also that when you create these desktops and so forth from templates, and I didn't show you how to create the templates, but assuming that you have them created, from those templates when you create the desktops, they naturally and automatically load bounce across the grid based on the capacity of the servers and based on how much it's being used at that time. And then I also showed you how you know uh, what it, how you could actually go in and sort of pull the plug on the server and how the other servers automatically react and and, and take up the load. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how uh, a Kaviza VDI in a box works and how actually it's very, very simple and how you can very you know, dynamically add servers to add to capacity and even take away servers um, you know, in the event of failures or actually if you want to bring it down for maintenance and so forth. So that's, that's it, Doug. That's what I uh, thought would be of interest to you guys. Well, perfect, perfect. I definitely enjoyed it. I hope everyone else out there did too. So if you guys would, if Kumar, if, if they're out there and they like it and they're like, well, this seems cool uh, and they want to learn more, what, are they, what do they need to do? Well, okay, they can go to www.kaviza, that's K-A-V-I-Z-A dot com. And, um, and they can, there's at the top, there is a free trial button. You can click on it. You give us your name and number and stuff like that, and you can actually download a, 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 a fully, uh, a, a, you know, trial, you know, fully functional trial version to do everything that I just showed you here today. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. So on that note, we'll go ahead and call this a, a video. But again, guys, if you um, did not hear the intro, we also did an audio podcast with these guys. So if you want to learn more about the Kavisa solution, definitely uh, refer over to that audio podcast, and it's on the. It's in with it's within DABCC Radio at www.dabcc.com forward slash radio. So again, Kumar, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today for both the audio and now the video podcast. Hey, thank you so much, Doug. I really appreciate you having me here. 
Well, perfect. Thank you. And as always, I want to thank each and everyone out there for listening to DABCC TV and making us a success. So thank you. And